Okay, uh, we see some participants joining now. That's good. Welcome uh, those of you who are joining early. You're here for the Safeguarding Your Assets, Understanding Intellectual Property in Cambodia webinar. Uh, we're happy to do this in partnership with uh, the Southeast Asia IP SME Help Desk. And we'll just wait for a couple of minutes while people join. Twenty one. Will that be our will that be our peak there? Twenty three. Let's see. All right, we have 25. I think I'll just get started uh, since it is 201 and we only have an hour. So welcome everybody. Thank you for joining. Uh, we will be talking about IP in Cambodia today. It's uh, something that's very important, but uh, Cambodia is still sort of in the early stages of developing its framework and regulations to deal with uh, issues that might arise. So I'm Brian Batsmorowski. I am uh, the communications coordinator and senior market analyst at Eurocham and I'm joined with uh, the services team today. Um, and I will just jump right into our presentation here. So I will share my screen. Let's see. Oops. Sorry. Going back to the beginning. Okay. So here's a quick peek at the agenda. Uh, after a quick opening word from us at Eurocham, we will hand it over to Mr. Tia Peng. He's an IP expert from the Southeast Asia IP SME Help Desk. We'll also hear from Ms. Chandavia Ng, an associate at Tilike and Gibbons, and they will get into much more specifics than we will mention at the beginning. All right, introducing intellectual property in Cambodia. This is just a brief overview for some of you who may not be fully aware of uh, the landscape here. So quickly, the definition according to the World Intellectual Property Organization, intellectual property refers to creations of the mind, such as inventions, literary and artistic works, designs and symbols, names and images used in commerce. So what does that mean? Uh, some implications for violating IPR. We have copyright infringement, so this would include basically plagiarizing or stealing someone else's music uh, for your own commercial use. Uh, that's a pretty simple one. I think we're all aware of that from uh, YouTube, sharing things on YouTube. You can only use like 10 seconds of the song or else you, you'll face some copyright infringements. Trademark infringement. So this involves using a logo or a symbol that can create confusion um, for the consumer. So you can see here, this is an actual case in India where this logo looks a lot like the Starbucks logo. So that is a, a trademark infringement. And a patent infringement, which can get complicated, but basically means you're, you're stealing someone else's invention. Um, and there are the five different types there. I won't go into those, but th those are the three big, big things you have to look out for. Uh, real quickly in Cambodia, I just wanna show two examples of what this means. So here on the left, we have a package of Vietnamese noodles uh, being sold in the US actually. And if you look closely, the temple here is actually Bayon Temple at Angkor Wat. So this is obviously an issue for Cambodia. Uh, this happened last December. The government actually has reached out to the US entities and are trying to get these off the shelves and may pursue legal action. So that's just one example of an infringement. And this happened a while ago, but here we have a North Face store in Siem Reap. It's, it's not a real North Face store, so that I think five locations got raided in Siem Reap. And that's another example of uh, that would be a trademark infringement. So those are two real life examples. Of course, with um, digitalization, we have a whole another host of issues to worry about with protecting digital assets, uh, which we may talk about later. But just to give you a idea of an idea of what Cambodia is doing right now on the regulatory front, we have a, a series of um, of laws here that have already been enacted. We have laws that are coming in the pipeline. Cambodia is also party to some global entities that work on IP, including the Berne Convention, 
and the WTO's agreement on trade related aspects of intellectual property. So I won't read these each one, but uh, the government is doing its part to catch up on the regulatory side. Uh, enforcement is still an issue, I would say. Um, but there are things in play. And I will hand this over to Zandre to talk a little bit about what Eurocham does on this front. Thank you, Brian. So basically, um, yes, as uh, my name is Zandre van Straten. I'm the services coordinator here at the European Chamber of Commerce in uh, Cambodia. And uh, basically on our side, uh, the main activities we've been involved in with regards to uh, intellectual property would be recommendations. So as you can see on the uh, bottom here, uh, the first thing we have is our white book. And the white book basically has, is a summary of over 78 uh, policy recommendations um, intended to improve uh, the business framework and environment. And this is basically through extensive consultations with our uh, 12 sectoral advocacy committees. Uh, to the right of this book, you'll see as well that we have a few uh, cases of intellectual property and uh, my colleagues will be dropping uh, the link in the chat here for everyone to have a look. So as you can see over here, uh, we have a few um, cases where we look at the uh, implications for business, the overviews and some recommendations. So if you want to learn more about this, please click on the link to the white book and the uh, documents uh, that my colleagues are sharing now in the chat. And then moving to the next slide, we also have um, existing uh, webinars that we've uh, conducted uh, together with some other partners, including IPSME. And apart from these webinars as well, we've um, done some uh, research and some surveys and a lot of questions basically to see um, what is the current priorities, uh, what are the current issues and the trends in intellectual property in Cambodia and how's, how's Cambodia re responding to it and what would be the way forward to create a mutually beneficial outcome for government, business and the wider uh, stakeholders at large. And with this, I just uh, give over again to uh, my colleague, Brian. Thank you. Okay, thanks, Andre. Yep, I think we'll jump right into our first presentation. This will be by Mr. Tia Peng. So uh, Tia, if you're if you're ready, I can uh, stop sharing my screen and uh, we can go to you. Okay, I'm ready. So Trang, can you share a presentation? Oh. Okay. Okay, let, let's get started. So uh, today, uh, I'm so happy to be here to present about the safeguarding your assets. A back, please. Yes, uh, regarding to the understanding of the IP in, in, in Cambodia. So a little bit uh, introduce uh, who I am. Next slide. So I'm here uh, of founder at Abacus IP. So uh, my process is involved in the registration of hundreds of trademark pattern design and some copyright work. And then uh, I'm got a law degree from Panya Sasra University and also hold a certification of specialization on the IP from uh, South Africa University. And in 2019, I was elected as a chairman of the IPAC Intellectual Property Association of Cambodia. And then I also involved in the many international organizations as a member of our council. So next, please. So uh, let's... Uh, as, as I'm an expert from the Southeast Asia IP, as we have, so just brief introduce about the Southeast Asia. So the Southeast Asia is uh, Asia IP, as we have this, is an initiative of the European Commission, which provides free confidential business focus advice to small and medium enterprises and intermediary in European U, uh, Union and in other countries for a single market program, such as Norway. 
Liechtenstein, Ukraine relate to the IP in the Southeast Asia. Next slide. So on this slide, you will see wide range of the services offered by the Habitat. So firstly, throughout the inquiry Habitat, you can see, you can send any IP question related to the Southeast Asia uh, to the Habitat, and then you will receive the reply within three working days. Secondly, the Habitat organize monthly training workshop and live webinar with a, a tell to uh, the need of the SME across Europe and South Asia throughout the year. So feel free to subscribe and connect to the team on the social media to keep you updated on the up upcoming activity. The Help Desk website gives you access to a wide range of the publication in terms of the country fact sheets, industry specification IP guides, a general IP guide on the various topic. And the guide can easily found it on the Help Desk website. Last but not least, the Help Desk also offer interactive a tool, for example, e-learning module, which is also available for download from the, the website. Next slide. The uh, consultation service of the C, Southeast Asia IP SME have, there is a, a taller to meet the individual needs of the Europe uh, SME we work with. We provide customized solutions that are specifically designed to help you to overcome the obstacle you may encounter when doing business in the sea, Southeast Asia. The project IP business advisor has extensive expertise in IP law and can provide you with the practical, actionable advice and recommendation first step on how to protect your IP and success in uh, today's competitive global market. You can follow the link to the slide to book the appointment with uh, your IP expert. Next, please. So uh, this is the agenda for uh, my presentation. So we have three parts. One is introduction to the IP and then uh, uh, IP protection through various I IPO, practical tip to safeguard your IP in Cambodia. So next, please. Next. So uh, here, what is the IP? So the IP referred to intangible creation of the human mind is encompassed a wide range of creation, including invention, trademark, literary, artistic work, and trade secret. The intellectual property represents value asset for, uh, for business and individuals alike. It embodies a food agreement creativity, innovation, and effort, and desire to proper protect, protection. Understanding the different of I, uh, type of IP and their protection mechanism is crucial for safeguard your creation and wrapping a benefit they, uh, they offer. Next, please. So why uh, IP important in Cambodia? As Cambodian economy uh, flourishes, uh, the important IP protection cannot be overstated as well as functioning IP system or foster a thriving environment in innovation and creativity, attracting foreign investment and ensuring fair competition. By safeguard your uh, in intellectual property, intellectual creation, business and individual can uh, confidential contribute to Cambodian economic growth and wrap the reward of their hard work. Next slide, please. So uh, without, without IP, many, many invention, uh, inventive projects would be not profitable because anyone who want to could simply copy the result. This slide will give some example of the company we use IP and how they benefit from it. So the first one is a Sandwick AB is a, a Swedish developer and manufacturer of the high-tech tool machinery with the 47,000 employees with the sale in more than 150 countries. In 2012, it was named one of the world's 100 most inventive company, a uh, uh, Sandvik subsidiary company, Sandvik IPAB, whole and manage a firm, including 8,000 patents. 
the second one is uh, all AOM Holding. It's a British multinational semiconductor and software company which uh, earn licensing royalty from energy from energy efficient microprocessor which develop but not uh, uh, manufacture. The third one, WL Gold Associate was founded by Gold family in uh, 1958. It developed high tech product based on remarkably versatile new polymer based on the pattern for impress technology. So Gold developed a special affordable uh, fabric now under trademark Gore-Tex that is both uh, waterproof and windproof with over 9,500 employees and has a trademark fresh guarantee to keep you dry. So the last one, Adobe Lab uh, Laboratory use a combination of patent to protect its noise detection technology and also added trademark. It founded in 1965. It's a successful high-tech company with over 2,800 patents granted and additional 2,700 patents appending a, a, a patent. It has also around 1,000 uh, 1, trademark worldwide. So licensees are obliged to use Dolby trademark on every product, including Dolby technology. So the company make approximately 86 of the revenue from the license of the technology. So next slide, please. So why IP uh, 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 protection important in Cambodia? As Cambodian economy contribute the floor, uh, uh, floors, uh, protecting your IP became increasingly important. Strong IP protection foster a healthy uh, business environment, promote innovation and safeguard your assets, allowing you to compete effectively and wrap the benefit uh, of your creativity. Next, next slide, please. Yeah. Okay. So, whenever a new uh, product is successful on the market, it's very likely that the competitor will attempt to make a similar uh, or identical product. The inventor will probably have invested significantly in developing a new product, establish supply chain for production, running marketing campaign, and funding distribution. So competitor benefit from this effort, they have greater market access, better connection with distributor to access uh, uh, and access to cheaper primary resources. As a result, they are able to offer their product at the, the cheaper price. So inventor are, are under the pressure and then maybe uh, driving pro, uh, out of the business while competitor get a free ride on the back of their creativity. So IP system is there to help innovators protect their invention, design, trade, uh, trademark or branding, or uh, artistic and so on. It's provide them with the ownership over their work and the right to exclude competitors from production, import, sell, infringing scope. Next. Second is part two. So uh, you can see uh, one product have many IP. What uh, are they? Next, please. All. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yes. So uh, this is example one product that may uh, have uh, a lot of IP in in them. For example, like phone. So uh, we have trademark uh, Nokia production two zero eight and start up tune. So copyright, we have software, menu, uh, user manual, or ring tune. And then the pattern, you have a data processing method or operating system and design like appearance of the, the phone, okay? And the arrangement of the shape at the bottom. So uh, trademark, uh, some, also uh, the last one is trade secret is some technical uh, know-how and to keep in how and not publish. So as you see here, uh, uh, one one product, there are many different types of IP. So next, please. So let's uh, move on to the different type of IP. So this slide show a wiring of intro property that can be involved in protection, uh, 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 involved. So uh, in here you have like pattern, uh, uh, utility model copyright. So patent is for in new invention 
and then the the, the uh, how to get it is a, a application and the examination by the patents officer. So utility model is quite similar to the patent new invention and application uh, and registration. No, uh, the third one is copyright. The original creation or artistic form, and then uh, the right is automatically exists when the the work is created. Next. So trademark are distinctive sign uh, uh, indicating the source of the product or service. They include, for example, like uh, names, the logo, color uh, applied to the owner product or service. We distinguish them from the product and service provided by the competitor. Second one is a uh, design. In industry design is protect like internal appearance of the product and they do not uh, give any protection to a uh, technical aspect. So the last one is trade secret. So uh, uh, trade secret cover the, the information not known to the public. It uh, the process uh, processor of the information is to, to cover uh, carefully to keep it confidential. It can be uh, sue anyone who, uh, who steal it. Next, next slide, please. So uh, what is pattern? A uh, patent is some uh, time co considered as a contract between the applicant and society. The applicant and the patent owner are interested in benefit personally from their invention. They have the right to prevent others from making, selling, offering for sale, selling or importing the product that infringing their uh, uh, patent for a limited amount of time in the country which patent has been granted. The exception is uh, 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 exception to, to this is used for non-commercial purpose, for example, like private use or academic research. So the society interested in the encouraging innovation so that the better product can be made and the better production method can be used for the benefit of all. Protecting new invention, inventive companies so that they can compete with the large established company in order to to maintain like a competitive uh, economy and learning the detail of new invention that the in, other engineer or scientists can further improve them and uh, promoting promoting technology transfer, for example, from university to industry. So next. So what exactly can be patented? According to the patent law, uh, a Cambodian patent law, a patent shall be granted for any invention in field of technology and may uh, relate to uh, a product or process provided they are new in involved in inventive step and uh, susceptible industry applica applica application. So uh, uh, new here is mean new to the world. New new to the world mean uh, there should not have been no previous uh, public disclosure of the invention before the data filing. So inventive step is quite difficult to uh, assess, to uh, ascertain whether the invention involved an inventive step, Cambodian Patents Office uh, and other country compare it with what they have been obvious to the machinery person skill in the art at the time of filing. And the European uh, Patents Office, EPC, does not uh, define what is an uh, invention invention is. It does, however, provide a non exhaustive list of the subject matter and activity that are not considered uh, uh, invention. The item list below, uh, next, next, uh, can you click to, to show all uh, types in this slide? Uh, yes. So in, in the box below is a, a is a, a invention that are not protectable in Cambodia. So next slide, please. So beside a pattern, we have a utility model which is smaller than that pattern, and then the protection of the utility model is also less than a pattern. Uh, in Cambodia, the protection of utility 
utility model is just seven years, while a pattern is a 20 year operation. So next, maybe I have to go quicker. <laughs> okay. This is uh, the scope of protection compared with uh, a pattern. So where is it? Okay, sorry. So the slide compares some of the key uh, aspects of the utility, utility model with those pattern application and current pattern. Utility model and pattern are both registered territory right offering protection for technical invention. In contrast to pattern, utility model are only available in a certain country. Utility model must be filed individual in each country where the protection is designed, where a pattern application can be filed centrally with the WIPO, WIPO. So the protection here is, as I mentioned earlier, uh, Utility model is for seven years and the pattern for uh, 20 years. And then after that, it will be become a public domain. Utility model are normally registered without search. A report on the prior app being carried on. The third report are standard for pattern application. Uh, exception is this for uh, Austria, where the third report are also produced for utility model. So you can uh, read through, uh, through this uh, uh, comparison. Maybe I, I move to the next slide. Yeah, so let's go to the what is a uh, thread map. I think uh, everyone may know uh, already about this. So thread map consists of any sign capable of uh, distinguished goods and service from one firm or company. uh to another okay so trademark also in uh to indicate the commercial source or origin of the product or service they uh, relate to moreover trademark may uh, fulfill other function as advertisement or goodwill so many type of trademark including uh, word mark configurative mark color or shape a mark so uh, uh, smell, sound, or moving cannot be uh, protected uh, in Cambodia. Uh, most of the unprotected mark is a non-traditional mark. So next, please. So you, you see here is a, a, a word, a number, a logo, or slogan, or 3D. Uh, also be uh, protected in Cam in Cambodia under the trademark law. So next, next slide, please. Here is a non-traditional mark. So sounds, color, fragrance, and then the, the design of the business establishment or motion. So uh, most of these are not uh, protected under the trademark law. So you cannot register for sound mark or color uh, a mark, just a single color, you cannot uh, register it, but the combination of color, it might be uh, registered. Next. So we talk about the design. Design is uh, the outward appearance of the whole part of the uh, products. Okay, let me uh, go quickly. <laughs> And the product can be uh, any industrial or handicraft item. So design is uh, any composition line or color or, or any three dimensional form or any material, whether associated with a line or color, it deemed to be uh, industrial design provided such a composition from the material give a special appearance to a product of the industrial handicraft and it can be judged by the eye. So this is the definition of the uh, design in the, uh, the law. Next, please. This is an example, or just an example of design that register with the uh, DIP. Next, please. So uh, copyright, yes, uh, 
uh, we are now a member of the Berne Convention, so uh, any work created outside Cambodia can be uh, protected automatically. So uh, uh, the copyright protect any human man uh, provided uh, production, expression, uh, uh, and not uh, a mere idea, a process of discovery. And expression must be original, so to meet the, the criteria for copyright uh, protection. So next. next. Next slide, please. Okay, uh, this is uh, maybe the last one is trade secret is uh, like the the secret information that uh, we keep in uh, doing business. So you have to keep it uh, secrecy by yourself. So next, please. Next. So this is a practical tip. So we have some practical tip for trademark, copyright, patent, and design. So uh, next slide. Yeah, so for trademark, uh, multi-application are required. So file in all classes where you are intend to provide good or service. So uh, no need to wait for using the mark before filing application. So you can file first and then uh, you can uh, declare in the fifth year, you can declare a little bit of use and non-use. And then define your right uh, up to you to investigate or pursue infringer. Another one, another slide. So here is a practicality for patent. So we, we have different uh, option to get a patent protection in Cambodia. So we, we have like uh, with China uh, validation, IPOS, Singapore, European, and then US uh, PTO, American and then GPO and also Korea IP uh, office KIPO. So you can file through this, this uh, option. So next, please. So for the copyright, like I said before, we are a member of Berne Convention. So foreign work are now protected automatically. So you, you want one the work created outside uh, Cambodia. So next, please. So I think uh, this is at uh, the end of the presentation, maybe. Uh, go go to the next slide, please. Yes, so uh, I think that's all for the presentation today. And thank you very much. I think uh, <laughs> it's uh, a little bit uh, time. OK, uh, thank you for your attention. Thank you very much. Thank you, Peng. Or sorry, thank you, Tia. That was a wonderful uh, you, presentation. We learned a lot. Jam packs. Would love to uh, investigate some of those slides more after this webinar is over. Um, okay. So since we're at two thirty-three already, I will just hand it over to Miss Chandavya Ng from Tiliki and Gibbons, who will talk a little bit about uh, exclusive distributorship. So uh, Chandavya, if you're ready. Thank you. Thank you, Brian. Uh, uh, let me share my screen. All right, so it's uh you see the full screen of the presentation, right? Great. Okay, so um good afternoon everyone. By way of introductions, my name is Chan Davia Ng. I am an associate at Tiliki and Gibbons, Cambodia office. Uh Tiliki and Gibbons is a regional law firm in us in Southeast Asia. We have offices in seven um city uh across six different countries in Southeast Asia, including um, Thailand, Cambodia, Vietnam, uh, Myanmar, Laos, and uh, Indonesia. Uh, my area of expertise include intellectual property, technology, data protection, and e-commerce. And in addition to being an associate at Tiliki and Gibbons, I am also an adjunct lecturer teaching IP at the Royal University of Law and Economics in Phnom Penh of Cambodia. Okay, so today I will provide. Uh, I will speak on the second topic, topic of this uh, webinar, which is on the recording and enforcing of exclusive distributorship agreement in Cambodia. For the agenda, 
um, we will discuss about the relevant law and regulation on the distribution distribution of trademark goods in Cambodia, what is exclusive distributorship agreement, the procedure to record exclusive distributorship agreement, as well as the enforcement of the record law. Relevant law and regulations. Of course, the relevant law relating to the distribution of trademark goods in Cambodia is the law on maps, trade names, and acts of unfair competition, specifically Article 11.3. Um, as Mr. Uh, Paintier has already mentioned, trademark right is a territorial right. That means if you want protection in Cambodia, you have to register your trademarks in Cambodia. But uh, I mean, after the registration, of course, you, your trademark is protected. But the thing is, according to Article 11.3, uh, your registered right shall not extend to the act in respect of article or trademark goods that have been put on the market in Cambodia by the registered owner or with his consent. That means uh, Cambodia adopts the national exhaustion of trademark rights. So as long as you sold your product, your trademark uh, product or trademark good in Cambodia, you have no longer a trademark right to enforce against the person that bought it from you with or with your consent. And that also means that parallel importation is prohibited, unlike uh, our neighboring country like Thailand. Because of these provisions, uh, the Ministry of Commerce has been instructed in 2015 to issue a practice like internal declarations to detail the procedure on recording and deposit of the Certificate of Exclusive Import Rights. And that is why in 2016, the practice number 186 has been issued by the Ministry of Commerce to set out the procedure to record exclusive distributorship. Um, by the way, this practice has already been repelled and replaced by the new one, which is practice number 117 in 2021 that also outlined the detailed, the detailed procedure to record the exclusive distributorship agreement. Okay, so since we talk about exclusive distributorship agreement, we would need to know what is exactly exclusive distributorship agreement. According to provision three of practice number 117, to provide an exclusive distributorship is the willing to agree by the right holder, which is the trademark owner, and the distributor to authorize exclusive use of the mark in terms of importation and distribution of trademark goods in Cambodia. So when we say exclusive use of the mark, we of course refer to exclusive distributor distributorship, which is different from sole dis uh, distributorship. Because exclusive distributorship is the scenario when you, as a trademark owner, has no right to import or distribute the good, and only your exclusive distributor could do so. And uh, this is different from sole distributorship because in sole uh, distributorship, the sole distributor can uh, distribute the good in Cambodia and then the trademark good can also distribute the good in Cambodia. And uh, the thing is they, the trademark good can, the trademark good owner could not appoint other person other than the one that already has been appointed as a sole distributor in Cambodia to distribute the good in Cambodia. And the exclusive distrib distributorship agreement refer to a written agreement between the right holder and the distributor authorizing the exclusive use of the mark in terms of the importation and distribution of the good in Cambodia by specifying about the mark, class, type, and or the model of the goods. So unless you have the exclusive distributorship agreement or the dis exclusive distributorship arrangement with your local distributor in Cambodia, uh, this discussion might not be relevant. Okay, so what is the procedure to record the exclusive distributorship agreement in Cambodia? Of course, first you need to identify which uh, whether your trademark good qual uh, fall under any um like for qualify for the record or not, because uh under provision four of practice number one one seven, some products could not be subjected to the record all. And it includes secondhand product, which is like a used product, pharmaceutical product. Um, the practice does not provide specific definition for pharmaceutical product, but it should be generally understood that a uh, pharmaceutical product could cover any pharmaceutical uh, products that are that are in that type, including medicine or even OCT OTC medicines. 
fertilizers and pesticides, of course, and prohibited goods in accordance with the existing law and regulations. For prohibiting goods, it should be something like e-cigarette because as we already know, uh, Cambodia does not allow the importation or the use of e-cigarette in Cambodia. And there are two ways to record exclusive rights depending on who you are. So if you are a trademark owner and then you have a local distributor, I mean, if you are a foreign trademark owner and then you have a local distributor that you appoint as the exclusive distributor of your trademark goods, you can do the record on through a record on of exclusive distributorship agreement. But if you are the trademark owner, if a Cambodian company, and of course you do the distribution by yourself, you can just do a certifying of exclusive distributorship. So um, I only talk about the record all of exclusive distributorship agreement. So for the required document, of course, you need to have an original notarized version of your exclusive distributor uh, importation and distribution agreement. And then you also need to have an executed request letter that have to be under either the trademark owner letterhead or the um, local distributor letterhead. And if you appoint a local trademark agent to do this work, it could be written under the local trademark agent's letterhead, but you need to provide an original not try POA, which is a power of attorney to that um, local agent as well. For all the supporting documents, it would include an import permit issued by the relevant authority if the subjected good is a restricted good. So because uh, in Cambodia, if the goods are restricted good, you need to have certain um, import permit. For example, if you uh, import electronic device and so on, you need to have an import permit from the uh, MPT as well, on TLC as well. So if uh, the subject good is those kind of good, you need to provide the uh, copy of a import permit issued by the relevant authority. And then you also need to provide a copy of article of incorporation, approval document and company registration certificate of your local distributor in Cambodia a copy of patent tax certificate and value added tax certificate of your local distributor in Cambodia, as well as the look, uh, copy of relevant trademark certificate. And that also means that you could only record your exclusive right if you have a trademark right in Cambodia registered, registered in Cambodia. For the sample of the exclusive uh, importation and distribution agreement, it is available on the Department of Intellectual Property right, uh, Pop Intellectual Property website. Um, once you get a copy of this slide, I think you can access to that, or you can just go to the website and then check for the form. It's available there. It's just a one-page uh, document. Um, so the trademark owner or the local distributor have a choice between using the sample provided by the Department of Intellectual Property, or they could use their own versions. But the thing is, if they use their own version, they need to um, abide by the condition that like certain information have to be specified in those agreements. So in most cases, we normally recommend our clients to use the sample provided by the DIP because um, they did not contain much confidential information and it is the um, format that the DIP already accepted. So it makes the record of process smoother than using the actual agreement itself. But if you prefer to use the actual agreement itself, the following information have to be specified, including the name, address of the trademark owner as a peer on the trademark certificate and all the company that wish to sub-transfer the exclusive right. So, um, okay, so talking about here, sub-transfer of exclusive right, it just refer to the scenario when the trademark owner, for example, like in the, U in the EU, um, they they have a trip. so the trademark owner is best in the EU and then they have a regional distributor in like say uh, Southeast Asia. So they the one in Southeast Asia can do the sub transfer of the right to the local distributor in Cambodia. That means in that scenario, three company is involving, including the one trademark owner in EU, regional distributor, uh, let's say in Singapore, and then the local distributor in Cambodia. So in that scenario, we are talking about sub transfer of exclusive right. So you need the name and address of the involving company, including the trademark owner and the one that sub-transfer. And then you need to have the name and registered address of the company in Cambodia, of course. 
the subject of the inclusive right, including the trademark, registration number of the trademark, class, type, and or model of the goods. In case of vehicle, I mean, if the subject good is a vehicle, the agreement need to clearly indicate the name of each model, type, or cylinder displacement and production uh, country. The agreement also need to clearly specify that the company receiving the exclusive right is the exclusive distributor for all importation and distribution of goods. All the company that wish to sub transfer exclusive right have the right to authorize the transfer of exclusive right to import and distribute in Cambodia to the local company. You also need to specify the effective date of exclusive importation and distribution agreement and the term of validity of the agreement shall not be more than 10 years. So you could do like eight, five, but not more than 10. And of course you need to be a name and signature of the German owner and the date of signature. Um, and last but not least, this agreement also need to be notarized. So if you prefer to use the sample agreement, um, I think it's only said something like, okay, uh, we are the trademark owner, we provide exclusive, uh, and we appoint this person as a trademark exclusive distributor in Cambodia. Beside them, no other can distribute in Cambodia like this and that, and no much, not much confidential information, and then you have it notarized. For the time frame of the record all, uh, it normally takes between like three to six months to complete the record all, although it could take uh, it could sometimes take longer if the DIP need more document or evidence to prove the right. After the record all is complete, the notice of successful recordation will be issued, and one of its copy will be forwarded to the custom authorities. And the recorder is valid for two years, counting from the validity date mentioned on the exclusive importation and distribution agreement. But in case the trademark registration or the agreement itself is valid uh, less than two years, the validity of the recorder should be equal to the minimum validation of that document. The recorder could also be renewed if the agreement and the trademark registration is still valid, but it needs to be done within. 30 days prior to the date of expiration of the record dolls. Otherwise, you will need to submit, I mean, resubmit the document again. So it's like um, you need to make a lot of document before you could make another record doll. So be sure that you re renew it before within 30 days prior to the expiration date. Oh, you also need to pay the official fee, which is like 150 US dollar per map per class. After the record all, there is an obligation for the local distributor to um, publish the notice of successful record all on three consecutive numbers of local famous newspaper or media. Um, in practice, some company prefer to publish uh, the notice through like Facebook um, official account. Like I saw those kind of publication as well. So it's it's easy because the, the law only said, okay, published on the local newspaper or medias. And after that, any parallel importation should then cease the business activity in, a, in relation to parallel import, including having any stock within 90 days from the date of notice of successful record all. After the 90 day windows have passed, uh, enforcement action against parallel importation could be taken. Lastly, it's about the enforcement of record doors. So once you have the record door successful uh, success, you uh, the importer or distributor in Cambodia has the right to file a complaint to the General Department of Custom and Exile, as well as competent authority or the court against any person who conducted parallel importation. But it should be noted that certain parallel importation is, uh, they cannot take action against certain parallel importation, including those done by the government like the, uh, the Royal Palace, the Senate, National Assembly, Council of Constitution, as well as the government, uh, done for non-commercial purpose or for the benefit of society, uh, done by any person via personal luggage, as well as the transit good. For the remedy, uh, the right holder or the exclusive distributor could send a warning letter to the person committing parallel importation, requesting them to not to stop the act of parallel import or they could request the DIP to send such a letter. And then the right holder 
and the person that commit the parallel importation will be able to negotiate on the settlement by allowing by either allowing the alleged importer to continue the sale but provide damage to the right holder or the right holder accept to buy the parallel imported good at a certain price. If there is no settlement or agreement, the parallel imported good will be transferred to its original uh, parts. Um, this is the end of my presentation. So um, I think we can open the floor for other questions, right? Yes, that's correct. Thank you, Chandavia, for that presentation. And we have one question uh, saved up here from Mr. or Ms. Rasi Sun. Uh, this is for Mr. Tia Peng. Um, what would be the most effective method to deal with trademark infringement in Cambodia? So, uh, thank you for the question, uh, Mr. Sun Rasi. So, uh, through my experience, I think that there are many options uh, that deal with uh, trademark infringement in Cambodia. So, uh, to save the cost, okay? And uh, the first option is to to like lock a complaint to the, the Department of Intellectual Property, right? With uh, infringing evidence. For example, like you are the trademark owner and then you have to attach with the certificate of trademark registration as well as the evidence to show that your mark has been infringed by other party, other competitor. So uh, up, when you, after you log a complaint to the DIP, a DIP uh, normally invite the infringing infringer to the, the table to settle the infringement the infringement of the mark. So uh, uh, if you are the legitimate owner of the mark and you hold certificate, and then uh, the mark is uh, very confusingly to your own, your own trademark. So DIP will try to explain the infringing infringer uh, about the, uh, uh, like you are infringing uh, the right of this person, the people like that. And then they, 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 they try to settle at the uh, uh, at, at the DIP, and then uh, the cost is very. Uh, I don't think you have to pay the cost for this, and then you have save a lot. So a DIP it work effectively to deal with the uh, infringer, uh, a, a trademark infringement. This is the first option that I would recommend you before you go to other option like. You see, like uh, uh, anti con anti uh, economic economic police, so also deal with the infring, uh, uh, infringement of the trademark. So you can log a complaint to them under the Ministry of Interior, and then uh, few. I think last year we have a CCCC Cambodian Counter Counter Trade Committee. So, but now it's dissolved already. So uh, you have anti economic police, and then you have also the court as well. So uh, the, the first option with DIP, I would recommend you to, to go first before you decide other option, because other option, you have to spend a lot of money on that. Okay, thank you very much, um, Tia. That was a great answer, very, uh, very detailed. I think we have, there was a quick follow-up. Do you know how long it takes to do this at DIP, I'm not sure ex exactly. Uh, I don't know. Did you, you? I guess for how long it would it, take for it, them to take action? Yeah, I, I think it it depend on it depend on uh, uh the complexity of the case. Okay, sometimes the the infringer they can they have their own supporting document that they they use before that before you get a trademark registration, right? They they like they have a, a prior use. As Cambodian law, uh, a prior use cannot uh, 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 identify you are the owner of the mark. Uh, you have the exclusive right to prevent other from using the mark. You have to register first, okay? So if you come, if you have a com conflict between uh, the person who have a prior use, this is, will be take a, a little bit longer because uh, mediation with DAP just a uh, uh, 
you have to provide supporting document and then sometimes they invite you uh first first invitation second invitation third invitation uh, like that so uh, it depends on the complexity of the case i see okay that that does make sense yeah Everyone has to follow the rules and stick to the procedures and it, it can take some time. I understand it. it can get complicated if there's similar trademarks out there. We yeah. have one quick question from our side. Uh, I think Visal will ask. Hello. So maybe this question is for Ms. Chandavi. Uh, I have a question. Uh, what should you do if you apply for a trademark? And uh, the uh, the DIP refused to accept it. And uh, second one is if someone is interested in knowing what is registered, is there a directory we can find out somewhere? Thank you. Um. So thank you for the questions. So the first question is like, um, you you are talking about the trademark prosecution, right? So once you your mark is refused, what should we do? That if I'm not answering you correct 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 okay so um actually in cambodia if the once you file for application for registration to the dip um the dip will conduct examination first is the formality examination which will examine whether you submit sufficient documents uh pay the official fee etc and then it's go to the substantive examination of trademark and for substantive examination of trademark the dip will evaluate or review the trademark in accord then with Article 4 of the trademark law to identify whether the good uh, the map could be registered or not. And in our experience, the most refusal that we receive is uh the map is not distinctive or if the is the map is like citation. It's like it's uh there is already a prior map that has been registered or have been filed and it looks confusingly similar to the map that you just applied. So I would like to talk about these two refusals specifically. So if the mark has been refused due to distinctiveness, of course, the trademark owner has the right to provide a response within 30 days from the date of the notice of refusal. And if they cannot provide within that period, they could, could also file a request for extension of time, but they need to pay official fee. And uh, if the refusal is due to distinctiveness, mostly we recommend the client to uh, okay, first we need to see if the map is really non-distinctive, uh, if the map is really descriptive to the good or service or not. If it's not distinctive or descriptive to the good or it, it is arguable, we recommend the client to file an argument, okay, saying that the map is actually inherent distinctive uh, through this evidence or that evidence of uh, definition. And then if it's like the map is not, it's in the middle, I mean, it's depending on the uh, spectrum, the distinctiveness spectrum of the map, whether it's a fancy full map, arbitrary or descriptive map. If it is descri uh, descriptive map, then uh, the map could also be registered by ev submitting evidence of use, which means that the map has distinctiveness through use. Um, for the diffusal based on citation, which means like there is already prior map, we need to identify whether um, the, the map really um, look the alike or confusingly similar, or uh, if the map has already been coexisted in other jurisdiction, and then we submit the evidence, and then the DIP will have the discretion to decide whether they will they are persuaded uh, by our argument or not. And for the second questions, I think you are asking about um. So, uh, can I have your second question again? Sorry. Yeah. 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 So if someone is um, interested in knowing what is registered out there, is there a way we can find out? Okay, uh, so if someone wants to know whether there is already a registered map on the registry, right? Correct, correct. So you can check on the global WIPO Global Brand Database, which is a database by uh, WIPO. They contain that different trade map from, that map from different uh, country including Cambodia. So you can also check your um, check to see by, uh, by using a filter, like filter to DIP Cambodia. And then you check by the name or by the logo or by the company names or by class. It's like, you can just go around in that way. So it's easy to check whether there is already existing map. So if you are the owner of a business and then you just have your new 
logo and you're wondering whether it is uh, someone else or not, you can just go to that sign and then check out, uh, find out whether someone look like you or not. And then you can change on that way. Otherwise, you can also uh, send the request to any local agents to ask them to conduct a trademark map search. Um, yeah, that's it. Thank you, Chandavi. I think that's pretty straightforward. Um, do we have last question? If not, then we'll, I think we can close already. Okay, I don't see any more at the moment. So um, thank you everyone for attending. Thank you, Tia. Thank you, Chandavia, Nora, and everyone involved. Uh, it was a really good discussion we had today. Um, Tia, you, you uh, brought a lot of light to the different tools available at the help desk. I, I hope everybody can make use of these tools. So I encourage you to go schedule a consultation, check out the website and the newsletter, uh, the different training uh, applications available. Uh, then you told us about the importance of IP in Cambodia as it grows. We need IP frameworks in place. Uh, this not only helps attract FDI, but promotes fair competition, builds confidence in, in entrepreneurs that their products and services will be protected. Uh, then you told us about different ways to protect ourselves, uh, how we can go about that. And Trindavia, thank you very much for going into exclusive versus sole distributorship. It's very interesting stuff. And um, Yes, I encourage everyone to, to get in touch with the help desk. Remember, there's free consultations. And if you'd like to get in touch with uh, myself, Sandre, Visal, our services team, all of our contact information is available on the website. Uh, and we hope to hear from you. This is all a topic that we care very much about, and we look forward to see how Cambodia deals with this going forward. And um, webinars like this certainly help. So your work is appreciated. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Goodbye. Goodbye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Thank you very Bye -bye. much. Goodbye. Thank you.